Welcome to Cryptocurrencies, the Rise of Digital Money Show, and I have a phenomenal show lined up for today. First of all, our guest is the legendary Frank Holmes. He was a instrumental part and a ground floor uh, member of Franco Nevada, which is one of the ultimate gold royalty companies ever, and Wheaton Reaver. So these two companies have put Frank on the map for decades, and he is a legendary investor based out of San Antonio. And we have him on today. He's the interim CEO of Hive Blockchain Technologies. And with Bitcoin going on a tear here with a 65% gain since bottoming uh, just a few months ago at 3,200, there's a great time to catch up with what's going on with Hive Blockchain Technologies, especially with the latest uh, fiasco in the company. And we have the CEO with us. So we, we're gonna dive right into this. Um, everybody knows they have uh, facilities in Iceland and in Sweden and they, they mine uh, on the blockchain, Ethereum and Bitcoin. And right now we're going to uh, dive into exactly what's going on with the company. This company has a 94% correlation with the price of uh, cryptocurrency, especially Bitcoin and Ethereum. So it's a great way for people who do not have a wallet and do not have an exchange account to go through the traditional route and uh, get exposure to cryptocurrencies. Frank, thank you for joining us. I'm well, thank you. Hey, I want to start out with what's going on right now with high blockchain technologies. Everybody knows that um, Genesis Mining is a significant shareholder of the company. They own about 26% of the outstanding shares and they have a master um, partnership agreement with you guys and they, or a service agreement. They are the technical side, they mine, the blockchain, Ethereum, and, and uh, Bitcoin, and they report to the company with everything that they're doing. They're, they're supposed to uh, mine efficiently, profitably on behalf of the shareholders. And the vision of Hive is to be sort of a royalty company that um, uh, is obviously very lean and very efficient with the way that they mine. And then they spin out these profits either to the hands of the shareholders or to keep growing the company. Um, and I want to get your take on what's going on. I know you're the CEO. You are a non-salary CEO. So you, you, you obviously are uh, looking to benefit all of the shareholders, including yourself. You're a top three, top four shareholder of the company. And I want to understand exactly what's going on. There's shareholders obviously listening to um, this call today. And everybody's waiting for sort of an update. And what do you see as a solution? Well, there are a lot of questions, Leo, and I'm going to try to help uh, your listeners understand that I was the seed shareholder in the creation uh, of Hive. Uh, I couldn't launch an ETF. I discovered early the regulators were not going to allow a Bitcoin or Ethereum ETF on concerns of AML, anti-money laundering laws. So I had all this knowledge and the opportunity came along for the creation of Hive, mining with the, the largest cloud miner, uh, Genesis Mining. And I thought it was exactly like uh, a royalty company. We raise the capital, we deploy with good mining people, uh, and they turn around and give us uh, our coins for that mining. So it was a remarkable success. It came out of the box when Ethereum was like $300 before it skied to $1,500. And Bitcoin was $3,000 before it went to over $15,000. Uh, so we had caught the cusp of that. We raised $200 million and we trusted that with Genesis Mining. We trusted that with an MSA agreement uh, that the first operations were in, were in Iceland, and then we went into, uh, from Iceland, we went into Sweden, and then from Sweden, we went into uh, <clears throat> the cloud. Now, what's really important for listeners is that uh, we have this, what's called an MSA, Master Service Agreement. And, and with that Master Service Agreement, and that public success of Hive, Many companies copied our model and they went public, uh, particular Hut 8 uh, and it's something like the 15 other names. They all give much more transparency. They give much more uh, what the costs are for electricity and the cost for the equipment. And that's what the expectations of the capital markets are. And that's what the brokerage firms, particular GMP, have expressed their concerns that there has to be more disclosure because it looks like we're being overcharged. So when I took on the duty of interim CEO back in uh, the spring, actually the, the fall of 2018, uh, I thought it was be a short-term period. 
And uh, what I discovered was uh, they did not want to deal with this MSA agreement. They just don't want to give the transparent the cost without an argument and a disappointment and frustration every month. They're a private company and they function differently. Their mindset's different. I have to respect those aspects. They don't understand the way you have a board of directors and the board of directors for a public company is not management. Uh, it is supposed to be independent to protect all the shareholders, uh, whereas a, the private companies, the directors also have uh, serious operational abilities. That's just not true here. And the great concern is they may own 26%, but decisions and contracts entered into them cannot just be self-serving and benefiting them. They have to make sure they're benefiting all shareholders. And the fact that their interests should be aligned with all shareholders because they have a meaningful position, which they basically got on an earning. You know, they didn't write a huge check. Uh, the value of the assets in Iceland were basically swapped with them. Uh, and so they got this big equity position. And it's been an incredible uh, roller coaster in ride because this, in my experience, has been the fastest bull and bear market cycle in any asset class. I have never witnessed cryptocurrencies such a, uh, an incredible launch, and then all of a sudden the, the prices crash. But during this period, what's happened is that the number of wallets of people using the blockchain uh, cryptocurrency ecosystem has grown. Many major financial companies have grown and deployed lots of blockchain technology. In fact, one of the biggest negative people in this whole industry was Jimmy Dimon at JP Morgan. And interesting enough, the peak in cryptocurrencies is when they came up with a futures market. Well, that was basically, in some believe, was a way to suppress the price of, of Bitcoin. And then what happens after that is that it's negative, 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 and all of a sudden, JP Morgan in February announced they have their own coin. So now they have their own stable coin, uh, and that was the bottom. So now it appears we've gone through this bottom in the cycle, and it's a gradual climb taking place. And still, you know, the costs of, are, are very expensive to mine, and we need to have better transparency because that's what the investment community and the public has complained about. So we have gone through the cycle. Uh, we are now basically in a position to jettison to rise with it. And in fact, we were the best performing. Uh, uh, public company mining Bitcoin and Ethereum in the capital markets. We have the biggest bounce from the lows. Uh, we have the biggest volume. And uh, so we're very excited about the fact that the market is using Hive as a proxy because a lot of people, a lot of shareholders in the capital markets don't want to go to a coin base, uh, based open account. They do not want to go to an exchange, uh, open a wallet. This whole process is really challenging for them but they can trade Hive as a proxy. And that is what Hive has become. Uh, and we're very thrilled about that benefit. We couldn't stop the decline because we're totally correlated with the price of Bitcoin and Ethereum. But as they came off their bottom, man, we just skyrocketed uh, almost 300% uh, lift from uh, top to high until they came out with this, I think, uh, ill in time, you know, it was just a poorly timed uh, uh, pr process of trying to change the board. And they want to change the board because we said we have a contract dispute under MSA and in that agreement that in 12 months, we have the right to go and claim back $50 million, which we've given them almost 80 million for because we can't get the transparency we need. And that's all of a sudden they come with this proxy battle. They want to get rid of the whole board. They just don't want independence. They do not want truly, and there's plenty of people, they're just not independent. And to the integrity of the capital markets are about full, true, plain, and timely disclosure. They are about transparency. And, and I want transparency if it's too costly in Sweden, then we can make a decision in Sweden as a collective entity. Uh, so that's where the real dispute came from. And they did it over the holy weekend. Uh, and that was sort of disturbing, but that's the sort of strategy they want to have. Uh, and I think it's not in the best interest of shareholders. Uh, that is, is deemed as a conflict of interest in the capital markets. Uh, people have written about this. I've had nothing but positive feedback of what's taking place. Uh, and all I want to try to do for all shareholders is just do the right thing. You know, and the right thing is about full, true, plain, and timely disclosure. And it is about you know, doing a new contract. So I hope, you know, I really do. And I work with good faith. That's the other operative word here is my fiduciary obligations, my duty of care, are not just the genesis because they own 
or to me, I don't take a salary uh, for these duties. Uh, it is for all shareholders. And, and so that's my goal. Uh, and, and so they did just send an email a while ago that uh, we could take over Sweden. So we have to negotiate those final terms. I do have someone that can help us manage that. It's a lot less expensive, but most important is I have transparency so that I can comply with the needs when analysts call, they wanna be able to analyze what our electrical costs are, why they're high or low, what our equipment costs are, what do we pay? So that is what I really wanna push put in that position and uh, rectify this. And I think that uh, Hyde then resurges, but that decision uh, costs Hyde 20, it costs the Genesis shareholders, I mean, all, a lot of money, a big loss, but it also cost them, I think, a, a total loss of about $24 million in their capital. So hopefully they really care about the company uh, and they would turn around and see that we are doing the best thing, that we need transparency. And if they don't want to give it, cool, don't give it. But we have to find someone who is going to do it in the best interest of shareholders. Okay, so just to, to recap uh, everything that's going on uh, and understand exactly what's, what's happening. There's a master service agreement between Genesis Mining, who operates the mines for high blockchain technologies, and some of the uh, requirements from the public markets, not for Genesis Mining as a private company, but for high blockchain technologies, is to reveal, hey, what's your electricity cost? What is the cost to mine these coins? and all of these other SOC 2 level uh, disclosures that uh, public co companies, especially in Canada, need to disclose. When you have analysts calling you or brokers calling you, you rely on Genesis Mining, the operator um, of, of, the, uh, of the blockchain mines, to provide you, the CEO, with this data. As they fail to provide this data or do not wish to provide this data, there's a dispute here and obviously, uh, all this uncertainty has hurt the stock. The stock has tripled since these lows for uh, Ethereum and, and Bitcoin, but in, in the last few days, the stock has tanked. And obviously, it's a, it's a $160 million company right now. With them being a uh, 25% shareholder, their uh, capital in the company is about $40 million. And if uh, the company is, uh, is uh, tanked for about uh, 30 to 40% here, because it was around 80 cents now it's about uh 45 47 cents they have a vested interest to solve this issue uh for their own sake and then obviously the entire company uh and all of the body of shareholders want to resolve this so either they comply with all of the standards and keep operating these mines in a very uh professional way or the ceo and the management need to find a new operator and run a new master service agreement with another company that can handle these facilities on behalf of the shareholders. Um, so uh, I, I think we got that out of the way. I wanna ask you two things regarding the company in general. Um, what are the next steps for the company once you resolve this? So in other words, are, are, are we looking at a situation where Iceland and, and Sweden keep um, mining coins or uh, is the company in growth mode now that there's a uh, resurgence in the uh, in the markets itself and what's sort of your cash and, and debt position just so shareholders can be um, looking forward in terms of your balance sheet well it's really hard for me to give you you know financials in respect that uh, we're not through the you know the audit's not been done for this quarter um, but I I'd say that you know we have the ample cash uh, so I feel comfortable with that. Um, and the most important thing is to resolve and have better mechanisms for accounting. The other thing that's really important is the SOC 2, as you mentioned, a SOC 2 is new counting procedures that we have to be able to audit whatever they say. So that is whoever our third party is, if, 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 because everything's on the blockchain, it's open. And it says that we're supposed to have received 100 Bitcoins, but we only received uh, 80. Well, what happened to the other 20? And they say, well, it's because of efficiency. All right, well, we have to see where they make that determination of efficiency because they have to show where they, someone else was deficient to satisfy the auditors uh, rather than just say what they feel like giving. Uh, they're the type of things that have to get resolved. And it's a big issue for all the public companies. In fact, there was a great scramble in the past quarter for all blockchain mining companies to get new auditors. 
uh, all the big audit firms were pressured by regulatory bodies not to be auditing these small cap mining companies uh, because of concern on disclosure. And, uh, and that's the operative word, you know, full, true, plain and timely disclosure. So the, the, the OSC turns around and has the accounting board and then they put pressure on the big. So the, the smaller audit firms that are used to, I guess, dealing with venture capital firms and public mining companies are digging in. Uh, but the SOC 2 process is very, very germane or something that's similar to it. Uh, I know we have this as a mutual fund. And I think we'll try to, you know, we're going to push to resolve this as soon as possible, uh, get the disputes resolved because a proxy battle uh, is just not in, in the best interest of their shareholders or our shareholders and uh, resolve this debt. I've had nothing but lots of positive emails uh, because people are really concerned about independence. Uh, they're really concerned about who's the checks and balances against conflicts of interest. And what they appear to say, they wanted all the independent directors or anyone that didn't agree with them to be thrown off the board and bring on their friends. And uh, that is not in the best interest for all shareholders. So uh, I, I hope they get this resolved shortly, uh, get uh, Sweden turned up back into production. We're in production in Iceland right now, and, uh, and I have, I'm ready to go. So, and then we get through to grow because people approached us many times to try to merge their entities with us because we're so liquid. Uh, and so I think that our growth profile will change dramatically for two reasons. And that's when the, there's a sort of secular bull market in, in the cripples taking place, and we have this issues resolved with Genesis Mining, then we just have nothing but upside. Frank, um, I, I just want to uh, recap this again, just in, uh, for people to understand what is the incentive for holding shares of high blockchain uh, over owning uh, coins. And two things are, are important here. All cryptocurrencies right now are unregulated. If the uh, for many many people, especially institutions, holding any unregulated asset is uh, is either illegal or too risky, and so a company that has a 94% correlation to an asset place that they like but are uh, barred from owning, so hedge funds etc., Hive is a phenomenal alternative. So that's one thing that's important to understand going forward for all hedge funds and institutions and even people who are uh, just d don't want to deal with either the, the accounting or the tax rule or the risk of hacking, etc. Owning a uh, hive is essentially the same as owning Ethereum or Bitcoin. It moves in the same manner. So when the company IPO'd at 74 cents Canadian on September, uh, on September 20th, uh, 2017, it rocketed higher in six weeks to 675 a share because Ethereum rocked higher, uh, rocketed higher. Now, when Ethereum started going down, the company's shares obviously go go down with it because it mines just, Ethereum and just like the gold stock, just sorry? like the gold. Yes, just like any commodity, uh, and, and the mining shares follow the commodity in in, in high correlation. Um, and so, going forward. Nothing has changed with the fundamentals. You still have your facilities in Iceland. You still have your facilities in Sweden. If the price of the underlying commodity rises, then your margins, your spread uh, are obviously uh, and affect positively by this. And if the operator, the miner itself is doing its job and complying with everything, then this is, uh, this is a, a business that's very easy to understand, very simple to understand. You mine, and you sell at a spread, uh, and then with the proceeds, you have as CEO the option of either invest, reinvesting in the company for growth, or uh, dishing it out as dividends, leaving a, a, obviously a, a cash a cash sufficient in the treasury, or you can merge other companies into this entity and grow that way. So I think everybody understands uh, all of this right now. I just want to have your personal take on what's going on in the crypto space. Do you think we are? Um, it, starting a, a new bull market, or do you think this is sort of a, a false breakout? Uh, what do you see uh, this in general? I know that a lot of Wall Street money is gearing up to come in. You have bucked that is delayed. Um, also, you know, all these um, ETFs that are proposed and are delayed, but 
the demand is, is amazing. You have 35 million users right now for Bitcoin. It's projected that it's going to reach about half a million, I'm sorry, half a billion people. And we see all these data uh, on how to divide 21 million Bitcoins into about 3 billion users um, if it gets to it. And obviously with better user experience, more comfortable for everyone, uh, there, there's uh, an amazing potential with uh, what can happen on the blockchain. Just your take on this in general. Well, it's important for listeners is to recognize that there's been so much negative news, and rightfully so, because the regulatory, when you deal in the crypto space and you go to these conferences, they're just very different, Lior. They're, they're, the, the kids that show up, they're, um, they're different than the artificial intelligence uh, uh, groups of kids I hang out with uh, that are PhDs and how they think. And one thing, they're all ambitious, but the greed DNA and the delusional uh, aspects of it are not in the AI world that are in the crypto world. So I, I think that's what's really important to recognize is a different element of how people, their values and beliefs are very different. So what's happened is that the regulators have to crack down on some of these like weird beliefs and values and, and so much uh, double standards and the hypocrisy and greed and it just, just a real serious issue in those, in those events. So I think it's good that regulators are cracking down on, on the BS uh, uh, coins that were being issued when they were just for people trying to take money for their own pocket uh, because the, the theme was crypto was the best place to be. But what's happened, they've all gone. They've been wiped out. The SEC's gone after a bunch of them. Same thing in Canada. This is positive. This is very constructive to create a healthy industry. Uh, and during this whole period, Billions of dollars are still being deployed. They're being deployed in better trading systems like Fidelity. Uh, they're better credibility. Coinbase is still expanding. Uh, I've seen this right across the country um, what, what, where the amount of money that's going into an intelligent, rational build out for the crypto space going forward. Uh, still, the biggest headwind is the Bank of International Settlements, uh, which is the central bank for all central bankers banks to clear the, their paper. Uh, their leader hates crypto. He also doesn't like gold. Um, and so he naturally is paper money. Even if the paper money is being destroyed like it's been in Venezuela, he doesn't care. He just wants paper money. And that's the mechanism. So he's been a force to deal with in, in just the, the, the overall industry rather than bad characters in the industry. He just doesn't like the industry. That's a bigger, different dynamic. Uh, I'm really happy of, of coming in and cleaning up this, this sort of uh, selfish, self-interested uh, greed, myopic greed. Uh, but at the same time, institutions are buying Bitcoin and they're buying Virgin coins. Uh, I'm told that they buy Ethereum. They're not going to go on an exchange to go buy Ethereum because they may be tainted. They want to have the coin that's just been minted. And so they set up an agreement that to say we where we sell our coins, that they want to only buy the virgin coins. So they're looking at that as sort of a counter cyclical asset class. Uh, they're taking a toll hole into it. So there are new serious committed players. Perfect. Frank, um, if people want more information about the company, about Hive, um, where can they go to, to get all the information? If they have any questions, where can they address their questions? You know, I, I, I think they uh, go to Hive uh, Blockchain. Uh, uh, we have a Twitter account. You can go and email us uh, to, uh, and we'll respond to those emails. I think that that's one of the easiest way if you're supporting uh, what we're doing. Um, like I said, we have, uh, I forgot to tell you, we have two employees. We're talking about being lean uh, and we're managing this so the quality of our, our contractors we, we have help mine our facilities. That's so key to us. Uh, so we're lean and mean, and we're positioned for growth. Uh, and if you want to support you know, our vision, what we're trying to do, then write an email and, and comment on it. Um, because I think that uh, that's, that's the best way for shareholders to, if you're already long, to advocate yourself. And those are not long. Uh, Hive is the most liquid and positioned for growth in this space. Once we get through this sort of headwind, um, then I think it just explodes on the upside. Frank, thank you very much for taking the time today and uh, we'll definitely uh, update everyone on, on what's going on with Hive uh, as this uh, um, issue with Genesis Mining gets resolved.
great. And just for your listeners, remember that majority of the time outside this week, Hive correlates so, as you said, well with the Bitcoin Ethereum. It's become a proxy. Uh, it trades in the U.S. over the counter, trades in Canada and Vancouver, H-I-V-E uh, dot V. And uh, so to keep in touch, uh, as I said, uh, cryptocurrencies remain stable and growing. We resolve this, this, this dispute. Uh, I really believe that Hive could easily rebound back to its previous price levels. Thank you very much, Frank. Thank you.